uh, hello guys welcome to feeding.net so in this a new session we are going to talk about asp.net core feature so let's start so guys .net core is a cross platform high performance open source framework for building modern application so guys modern applications are such as cloud based application web based application and windows based application uh, .net core is a perfect a friend for you it provides you high performance as compared to the previous version of .NET uh, framework. This uh, .NET Core is pretty fast. And let's move to the next point, cross-platform. Because any code that can run on multiple operating uh, system is uh, said to be cross-platform compliant. So code written in .NET Core can be run on Windows operating system, Mac operating operating system, and as well as the Linux operating system. Okay, so as far as the hosting is concerned, uh, application written in .NET Core can be hosted on IAS, IAS Apache, Docker, self-hosting. So these are the hosting uh, model for .NET Core. And what about the self-hosting? Self-hosting is nothing, but it uses a built-in web server they have their own at HTTP server for hosting the application. And previous version of our uh, .NET framework only uses the IAS. So this is a pretty good feature we have in .NET Core. Uh, and let's move to the next point. It provides a unified programming model for both MVC and uh, Web API. Uh, previously, uh, what happened? Uh, MVC and ASP.NET controller inherits from two different base class, but right now they have uh, unified it and so that now both, sorry, it's not not, it's just a uh, spelling mistake. So right now both MVC and ASP.NET controller class inherit from same controller base class and in, and they return I action result interface. What is I action uh, result interface? It provides you implementation such as view uh, result in case you want to return any view in case of MVC, you can use this. And for API, we generally return the JSON. So we have the JSON uh, result function here. Uh, let's move to the next point. It has the built-in support for dependency injection. Previously, uh, what happened? You have to use the third-party libraries such as Ninjek to implement dependency injection. But right now, for .NET Core, it has this built-in feature. And what is do dependency injection do? Dependency injection reduces the hard code dependencies among your classes by injecting those dependencies at runtime instead of the design time. Okay, and make your code maintainable and loosely coupled. Okay, it provides you object whenever it is required. So that is the good definition of dependency injection. You can use anywhere. And the last point, uh, .NET Core is an open source. Okay, so what is open source? Code that is designed to be uh, code to be designed to be publicly accessible is said to be open source, in which anyone can see, modify, and distribute the code, and they are freely available, and you can redistribute and modify them as per your own need. So that is the open source, uh, perfectly fits for the .NET. Uh, now, uh, what all the setup requirement for .NET Core? So first we need the editor and we need the .NET Core SDK. For editor, you can use the Visual Studio or you can use its lighter version that is called Visual Studio Code. In, in offices, we generally use the professional version. Uh, for our personal use, we use the community version. And there is one note which says uh, basically when you install the Visual uh, Studio, .NET Core SDK comes by default with it. In that case, you just need to install the .NET Core runtime separately. So now is one more case. Uh, if you want to install the .NET Core SDK, then you don't need to install the .NET Core runtime because with .NET Core SDK, runtime comes by default. So that is the guys. So that is all about .NET Core features. So we have completed this session. Uh, please wait for our next video. Uh, thanks a lot.